Hello everyone and thanks for watching the channel. In today's video I want to review the Orico Thunderbolt 3 docking station. This is a 15 in 1 docking station that provides up to 60 watts of power delivery. If you want to find out more about this device then stick around for the rest of this video. And if you find it useful please don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help support the channel. Before we get into the pros and cons of this device, I do want to thank the team at Orico who did send me this device for review. They didn't sponsor or influence this video in any way, but they did provide me the hardware to test. In the past couple of years, docking stations have become really important to me. Between the need to expand my Windows and Mac laptops and having the need for multiple locations, I started trying different solutions ranging from traditional USB docking stations which didn't perform well enough for me, to Thunderbolt expansion hubs, which worked really well but had other limitations, I finally decided that a Thunderbolt docking station would be my best choice, and since then I've tested several docks. Today I want to cover the Orico 15-in-1 Thunderbolt 3 docking station and put it through its paces. But before we do that, let's have a quick look at the hardware. In the box you get a quick start guide, Thunderbolt cable, and a power supply. Looking at the back of the unit, you get a display port, the host Thunderbolt port that attaches to your computer and is capable of producing 60 watts of power, another Thunderbolt expansion port, a USB 2 port, a SPDIF optical port, a 1 gig Ethernet port, and the power input port. I did want to mention that the Ethernet port is USB based and it does share some of the bandwidth with the USB controller. This is pretty common in several Thunderbolt docks in this price range. The other item I wanted to note is that the marking is actually applied to the label. And once you remove the label, there's no port identifying at all on the unit. For most ports, this isn't really an issue, but I would consider marking the host port on the device yourself, as things won't work correctly if you reverse these Thunderbolt ports. Looking at the front side, you get a headphone jack, an SD and a micro SD card reader, two 10 gig USB-C 3.1 Gen 2 ports, one USB-A 3.1 Gen 2 port, and two USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 ports, as well as another USB 2 Type-A. The same issue with the labeling applies to the front panel. Again, not a huge issue, but I did want to point that out. Overall construction is pretty good. It has some rubber feet at the bottom to keep things from moving around too much, but you will have to be cautious when plugging cables in and out, as the unit's kind of tall. Now that we've looked at the hardware, let's test the device to see if it performs as expected. As you can see from my display setting on my screen, the display port on the device works really well and it instantly picked up my Dell 4K display. Next I tested an external SSD attached to the front USB-C port. As you can see from the benchmark, the performance is pretty much as you would expect from a 10 gig USB-C device. It's doing well at saturating the USB bus, so no complaints here. Next I attached a Thunderbolt SSD with the Samsung 980 NVMe drive and as you can see the performance was pretty good. I did witness a performance penalty with this drive plugged into the docking station versus being plugged directly into the computer, but the overall performance was still really good. The last thing I checked was the 1 gig Ethernet port. As I mentioned earlier, this is a USB Ethernet adapter and not a dedicated Ethernet controller. So you won't get the full gigabit speed from this device. In my experience, this design choice is common with docks in this price range. In my testing with the device, though it's slower than what I would like, it performed consistently with no issues. Thunderbolt docking stations are challenging to buy as on paper they all look kind of very similar with the pricing varying significantly. The only real thing they have in common is that they all share one 40 gig Thunderbolt connection to the host. But each device and manufacturer makes decisions and compromises based on cost and performance. Despite a few minor issues such as lack of port marking and slower Ethernet performance than I would like, this device sits in a nice price performance range. With higher end units costing $300 to $400 and lower end USB-C only devices ranging from $40 to $150 depending on features, this offers you a mid-range alternative without giving much in the way of performance. Anyway, that's about it for today's video and I'll leave links to the device in the video description should you want to check it out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.